Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black and welcome to part 55 of my let's play of Amayui Castle Meister. Today we're going to do Rishu and Seili's little quest here. Let's start with some explanation. So, fulfilling our promise to Rishu, we head to this damn hot ass cave mountain volcano place but we were thinking it would be hot around here I mean last time we had forest fires in this zone but it's surprisingly chill so Risha says we are finally here she was getting sick of waiting hey what were you expecting when you call us out here without any explanation whatsoever? Ah, oh, right. That was a long pause. So, yeah. She realized she called us out here, has given no explanation for it. And she's grateful to us. Yep. So, she's being surprisingly forthright with us. But she seems pretty serious today. What's here, anyway? Well, as the ruler of Rao Rosso, no. As she herself, there's something that she needs to put an end to here. So, will you help Avaro? Like he's ever turned anybody down. And besides, he did make that promise. So, starting now, she's going to start a chant, a kind of spell that's been passed down in her family. So while doing this chanting, it takes a while and she needs to do it until she reaches a certain destination. Avaro's role in this is to keep anybody from interrupting her. Specifically to not let a single person touch her no matter how many people there are. Uh, you got it. So she starts it up and starts glowing. So with this light, she has to release a certain seal. It's interesting how they use sealed this and sealed that in Japanese media where it isn't as common in westerns. Ah, anyway. So, there's something here. It's polluting the surrounding and ca causing harm to people. So even if she has to pay with her life, she's going to put an end to it. Shoot it down. Yo, that's her leaving our party. Bye, Rish. It's been emotional. Even if you give your life, huh? You're always running on ahead of people anyway. Yeah. Avaro says this to her, but she's already not able to listen. But, Avaro says he'll bring you back with us. We're all going to return to the castle together. Alright, explanation. Rishu is concentrating on this spell thing. And can't do anything else. 
so she can't handle attacks. And if she does get attacked, we'll have to start it all over from the beginning. Probably means the game over, actually. Man, overall, you're really talkative today. The first most important character I want out is... What's her name? Oh my god, I'm drawing a blank. Mikayu. Her job is to stand two squares in front of Risha and Sally, actually. Now, really, there are a lot of undead here. So the characters who will be most useful are my characters with holy attacks that can still capture, which are Kisnir and Eo. Deedhelm is a secondarily useful character. So that'll be our first turn. So to say that Rishu has left our party is technically true. Yeah, basically I just have to use Eel or Kisnir. Oh, Fia can take these guys too. She has a magic attack that captures. But Eo especially is useful because she just moves so fast. Uh, just stay here, Mikiyu. And the other two... Keep moving. Man, I can't wait until my party's more spread out. I can't use them properly like this. Okay, we'll start with Eol. She won't be able to knock out this Gofalam, leaving the experience for Deedhelm. Deedhelm can't knock out the ghosts, but this is it. Never mind, Deedhelm is a worthless piece of shit. Actually, for regular enemies, these Goofalams actually have pretty good dodge. These giants still annoy me because of bad experiences in, in a previous game. But this should go well. He all starts. She has great dodge, but I don't want her to be, to be running last hits because she doesn't have much life or defense. Bam. More attack. I've been getting a lot of level ups, haven't I? Eh. Mm-hmm. Capture. Wait, did I use the wrong attack on that giant and not capture it? I had to swap to the capture. I may have messed up. Oh. 
No, it's stupid fucking. I've got Kisner right here waiting to kill you when you just go around. Who do you think you are? Well, he is surprisingly low level compared to my other undead killers, so let's give one to her. Ah, nuts. Well, I got a backup for my backup, don't worry. Getting about to that point where my characters will really start spreading out so I can better use them. Oh god, these things. These aren't the things with the human crusher ability, so should be fine. They just take a while to smack down and do a lot of damage. Reflectability. I'm going to need to heal those girls. Ha <laughs> ha. Hmm, that reminds me, I could use Avaro if I put on his fire claw. Uh, I've got better attacks. But Avaro needs the experience. And I don't want this prick just wandering on through with a varl otherwise occupied. Hmm. Six, six, and fifteen. Well, if it reflects too many times, then it'll do a bunch of damage. Or it could just take two hits and die. I much prefer it that way. Screw you, skeleton. Ha! Kodo Kaisha. Yavaro really sucks. All right, we've weakened it. Fia doesn't suck. Perfect. Asamishimeda!
Hmm. Just try and keep up. Now you may be wondering why I'm having Mikayu stand two steps in front of. Screw you, bats. Two steps in front of Rishu. While Rishu is temporarily out of my party, she has two movement points instead of the usual three. So by taking up the second spot in front of her, I effectively move her, reduce her speed down to one instead of two. Oh great. This Wraith has decided to land on a flying zone, so that only ranged attacks can hit it, but I don't have any good ones. No, I could bring Fia over. I'll think about it next turn. Oh yeah, I brought her up so I could get some healing on. Bingo. Now I'm slowing down Risha and Sally because, again, if she enters battle, I get a game over. Or at the very least have to try this map over from the beginning. Neither of which I'm really looking forward to. I'm going to kill you and the people, everybody else in this room. Well, other than my allies, they're in the room, but I'm not going to kill them. Look, you guys know what I mean. Bunch of dead assholes. Uh, heals too far away. Well. That's the cost of dealing with an AI that doesn't want to cooperate. Oh, a card. And there's one enemy left in the room so that I can't take control of the whole room yet. And then I need to take these two rooms on the left and right. I saw enemies come out of there already. Alright. Ha! You have walked into my trap. Speaking of enemies coming out of rooms... Alright, magic attack, that's great. An interesting fact about Fia here is that she's hit her cap on physical attack. You can see the gray bar and the cyan bar. Yeah, that's the size of it. It's so annoying. Alright, let's head back and start killing these guys again. I may have to pull some more guys in in order to handle these. Or to keep the Rishu away from the enemies. Oh, the undead aren't so bad, but are the ones Deedhelm can't do any damage to. Alright, still have a bunch of enemies to kill. Can you damage this? Only with that. Now I think Rishu will probably try to walk straight up the center. In which case she'll just stand right where she is. 
Oh, thank you for attacking the girl that can kill you. Makes my job easier, for once. Yeah, Rishu was immobilized for a turn. Won't be permanent, since I have stuff to do with all of my characters, but... Hmm. Now, I know there are, are two more mining points. And they'll need to bring Havaro or Deed up to them. I forget offhand just which points there are. You stupid, ugly, undead bastards. Huh. Well... Capture this enemy of our... Okay, I've always been well suited to a lot right now, but if he can get through those guys, that'll be good enough for the moment. I didn't notice, but Kiesinger is actually quite low on life. Kill of our, kill of our, kill of our. Alright. Uh. Alright, healing. Healing is good for us. Now, I don't want to send anybody to kill that guy because I don't feel like I have anybody who can stand on that trap for a turn and not take too heavy a damage. So everybody's going to be tackling this other guy. Well, how why not? Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do something a little out. I'm going to put on the mercy ring. Kill this guy within an inch of his unlife. 
Well, all of his unlock, really. <laughs> and then give the experience to Mikayu. Now, capture rope. Now it would have been a problem if it revived itself, as those enemies do sometimes. But fortunately, we didn't have to worry about it. Hmm, looks like somebody's going to have to stand on that spot no matter what. Alright, I need to take these three and handle that last one because I'm tired of enemies. Wait, this is perfect. Ranrin Yuki is immune to that kind of damage. Alright, now I think it's all Avaro and Fia. Hmm. It looks like I'm missing a mining point somewhere. I'm pretty sure this last one Avaro can get to is a gather point. An herb point. Where was it? Where was it? Ah, whatever. I'll figure it out another day. Oh, I know. Fia can't mine unless I put this on her. Hakutsu no ure wa... Bingo! Perfect! We're gonna call this good. And once Rishu stands on that square, this map is done. Sort of. Hmm. Abunea Steel is going to be something I'm, I've got my eye on from now on. I got four of them. Alright, so. We protected her and got her to the point. And in front of us is this sealed ass door. She dumps her magic into it. Rejoins our party. So, she's grateful, because, thanks to us, she was able to undo the seal. So, this seal, huh? What is sealed here? The door opens up and we get to see inside. Well, this is a strange spectacle. Navarro informs us that there are all kinds of torture instruments hanging about this room. So Rishu is going to tell us a boring old story about the past. Yeah, this is pretty harsh. Rishu is actually the fifth ruler of Rao Rosso. Her great grandfather, the second ruler, was an extraordinary man, she's been told. So, he was widely praised, very valorous, and the fortification of Rao Rosso was completed under his watch. Now, 
月物として世に知らぬものはない英雄になれたでしょう。But he was exceptionally harsh, cruel, and repressive. And if he hadn't been done such、uh, inhumane actions during his rule, he probably would have been a hero whose name was known throughout the world. Mm, okay. So, Avaras, why are you telling us about this right now? Does it have something with, to do with this humanoid thing standing in front of us? That is an excellent speculation you've brought to us, Avaro, as expected of somebody whom. Rishu thinks so highly of. Yeah, way to use those two brain cells. So, this weird looking guy is just glaring at us. So he stepped through the gate of devils, abandoning his faith and becoming, well, obviously what we see here. At that point, the first ruler and the third ruler sealed him here, and since that time, the rulers have had to maintain the seal. <laughs> But even with that maintenance, he has been managing to affect things outside of his prison, and we've been forced to come on down here to deal with him again. For that reason, Rishu is here to put an end to it. With that, Avaro's role is complete, but she would like him to watch. Her power will come out more freely if he does. Heh, don't be stupid. We're going to be fighting too, obviously. Readying his gear, his wrench. Avaro gets ready for battle as well. So, this guy makes this sort of droning noise as he. Avaro gets the impression he's smiling or something. A really unpleasant feeling. As he looks at a Rishu. This can't be anything good. And now we think again about all the torture implements laying around the room. Is this the guy, this kind of sadistic bastard, who would torture his own great granddaughter for kicks? Yeah, probably. So, Avaro says to him, Rishu is a good woman, but she is not suitable to the likes of you. She takes it as a compliment. That's not what you were trying to say here. But let's beat the hell out of this guy and head home. <laughs> Now, again, with Rishu back in our party, that's an improvement. But if she falls in this battle, it's another game over situation. Oddly enough, this guy's AI seems to set a high priority on attacking her specifically. 
but she still has a ton of defense and a ton of hit points, so it actually makes this level a lot easier than it would otherwise be. Now this is another AI, however, that will not move until there is something in range to kill. I'm going to start with Rishu and Seili, though. Does he have this... No, no area of effect attacks. So we're pretty good here. Oh, you bastard. Oh. Alright, she's gonna go and do her duty as the ruler of Rorosan. Boring. She's more enemies. Hmm. That was a medium money card. Hmm. I'm actually rather used to that enemy walking forward on the first turn. I did do tr two trial runs of this level. Ah, just like that. Now, he can't do much damage to Grisho and Tseli, but Grisho and Tseli doesn't do much damage to him either. Good job of all kill this thing. Uh, this could take a little while. Well, well, let's dedicate a healer to keeping him alive while he tries to do his damn job. Meanwhile, the rest of us will worry about this guy. And by worry about this guy, I mean totally ignore him. Except to the extent I have to. Kisnir can do a lot of damage to him, but she also takes a lot of damage herself. Well, most enemies don't have any critical hit rate to speak of. Keep at it, Avaro. I mean, we all like watching you <laughs> yeah, hurt yourself trying to kill things. I'm telling you, his AI just attacks Rishu all the time. Even though it would, he could like kill Kisner with a thought at this point. See, Kisner? 19 damage. And he just threw this magic attack that could have killed her. Totally could have killed her. Probably a darkness attack besides. No, non elemental. So it wouldn't have done dealt bonus damage to Fia like I was thinking. Hey, 
Hey, let's get another healer on the scene. Obviously, not Rosalie. Gotta hate that particular feature. This, uh. I still don't know its proper name. No, oh, Grisha and Celia is starting to be hurting here. Well, let's do the right thing and not let Grisha get too low. I'm going to do my best to throw his... No, that experience was meant for Mikeyu again. Well, that's how it goes. That's come some kind of speed leglet. So, did we do it? Not yet. So, Risha and Sele attempts to get a death blow in on him. It lands, but his body is largely expanding. Jeez, this guy just doesn't know when to quit. This looks dangerous. Hey, it looks like he's planning something. So, yeah, she knows what he's trying to do. He's doing a self-destruct kind of explosion thing to knock this entire area out and us with it. Oh, but she isn't going to let him do that. Ooh. So that guy expands like a damn balloon and Rishu does something or other. So, explosions, clashings, Avaro takes shelter behind a rock and manages to protect himself, but Rishu... Yeah, <laughs> Alright, the extermination is complete. She's still alive, so I guess that's good. Rishu, you idiot. So, what is he calling her an idiot for? I mean, she went and protected everybody like this. That was just reckless is what he's trying to say. And you've been basically going berserk since we came here. You're making us worry about you. Ah, really. She really likes that about Avaro. Loves that about Avaro. <laughs> so, somehow they managed to finish this task. She says that one of her grudges against Influence has disappeared with this. Although I don't know how this guy was connected to Influence exactly. Rishu! <laughs> yeah, apparently she wasn't so hot on her feet as she was before getting blown up. So, Avaro manages to hold her up with both hands. I should mind him to be careful. Her armor alone would probably snap his 
spine like a twig. Hey, she says she feels his love. Are you trying to get me pissed off here? Well, anyway. Thanks a bunch for stopping that explosion. We're glad to be alive, thanks to you. <laughs> Accusing of Aura falling for her. Yeah. Sure. We'll let you have it. Just stop speaking. <laughs> well, she's happy. It's strange, even though she feels pain all throughout her body, that she could feel such happiness right now. So, it's time for him to fulfill those two promises. Oh, now that we mentioned it, we did talk about that before. What was it? What was it? Oh yeah, helping out Raul Rosso by means of Rishu and Sally. And also, Alvaro in that conversation also said that he would take Rishu as his lover if she was able to charm him personally, rather than offering him social status, like she had tried to do up the, to that point. Oh yeah, Alvaro just remembers that. So, did she actually win him over? Eh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but, you want to do it now? And here? You know, Rishu, you really ought to think about the time and place of these things. Uh, hello, Rishu. You're not dead, are you? That's the sound of breathing. So I guess she's not dead. Oh, jeez. She's got some guts in a lot of ways. In some ways it makes... It's so tiring to deal with, and in some other ways, it's absolutely cool. Well, she is pretty interesting. So, let's get this withdrawal from this place going on. So, they drew back, found a safe place. Dum -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Oh, this is the sex scene music. Wait a minute. You're not actually going to have sex while she is unconscious. And after a huge battle. You should set aside some time to rest, seriously. But anyway, I'm cutting now. Talk to you in a moment. <clears throat> Mega power! That's the sound of somebody mumbling in her sleep and saying she loves Avaro. Hey, Rishu, Rishu. Wakey, wakey. <laughs> so, you're awake again. Are you all right? She's a little, uh, disoriented. So, she's finally come too. So, when did Avaro put her armor back on? That's right, the last thing she remembers is having sex with him. With surprisingly a large amount of her armor still on, but still. Alright, so let's explain to Rishu what just happened. Apparently, we had a battle. There was an explosion which she stopped and then she passed out. You remember that, right?
Okay, yeah, she remembers that part. And after that, she and Avaro. After that, you passed out, and we've been watching over you ever since. Oh, and we're on the way back to the castle and stuff. So, that sex scene, her and Avaro. That was simply a delirious dream she happened to have. Hey, what's wrong? Is there something wrong with your body? Something rather than something wrong being with her body. There isn't any white hot liquid on her chest. Yeah, that happened in the dream. No, oh, she was so touched by what didn't actually happen that she's having trouble coming to terms with it. Are you all right? Seriously? Ah, uh, just wait. Fia's up ahead, handling some stuff, and she should be back to heal you in a moment. So. We'll be headed back to the castle soon, and until then, you should rest up. All right? No way, she doesn't want to sleep right now. So, so, Avaro came a lot inside of her. Right? Right? Man, she is confused. What the hell are you talking about? We did some emergency first aid on you, but apparently that's not going to be enough. So, just calm the hell down. So, no way, no way, no way. Are you telling me that when he promised to marry her and he took her virginity, that was all the dream? Uh, okay, quit yelling out nonsense and running around crazy like. And even so, we got the mega power out of it. Huh. I guess Risha and Silly is so delusional that somehow it warps right back into reality and gives us what we want anyway. Now, Varl did kind of notice she was making some cute noises as she slept, but this is <coughs> takes our understanding of Risha's Psyche to a whole nother level. Now, Rishu gets to tell him what he said to her. For example, when she's quiet, she's quite cute. And she's got big nipples and it's lovely and stuff. I didn't say that. And don't go shouting about your nipples for crying out loud. Alright, she is back. She's got preparations for first aid and things ready for when we get back to the castle. But, hmm. She's gathered mega power out of it. Are you telling me that in the short time that she's been gone, they managed to get it on? No, no, we didn't. That's a lie. We totally did it. And Avaro told her that he fell for her and everything. No, we didn't. No, I didn't. No, nothing. And what's this I fell for you bullshit? Right? 
What? She managed to stop? Oops. Oh. He said he might have said he fell for her. Yeah, that's true. That happened right before the scene changed, didn't it? Uh, anyway. You are kind of cute and stuff. Oh, she's finally calming down. This is good, this is good. Wait, Fia. You got what you wanted out of this. Don't go getting into another jealous fit. Okay, she's happy with this. Next time we get to do it in reality. And censored, 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 actually. I don't actually want to say that. She's got a dirty mouth. And Fia continues to look all jealous about it. Is she going to make her up her mind whether she wants us having sex with other people or not? Oh, looks like we have a scene with Rosaline. Hey, that rhymed. I'm thinking... We didn't need any of the one-star undead that we picked up. But perhaps one of these other guys will have a use for them. Well, look at me speaking too damn soon. The undead improve accuracy on my Yuriki, so I have a good reason to go pick that up. Ghosts. Magic attack, huh? These two get a spot to handle themselves in in the next map I'm visiting. Sorry, I forgot to check what I had left over. Actually, I think I'll keep all of those. Okay, new things I can build. Now, both of these take as prerequisites some of Rishu's base shields, and so these are all improved shields she can use. Hmm. Yeah, that will make her quite versatile in attacking. Giving her a non-elemental, a holy, a fire and a cold attack. Yes. Okay. Yes. Actually thinking about ahead, I'm going to make a few of these things. Yes. <coughs> I don't use them often, but there's a map coming up. When was that map? Oh, I remembered. But anyway. Yeah, that'll be fine for now. Any buildings? I just love building buildings. Alright, I'd say we're doing good. So that'll wrap us up for this time, and I'd like to thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Wait a minute. I was supposed to save here.